Welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings, with me, Greta Chamberlain, Yvonne Crayer, Lee Steima, and the Realm of Beings. Shifting Impressions, which is one of the vehicles that supports the transmission of the realm of beings, is here to assist you in delving into your being by providing numerous topics and discussions for you to intake as you deepen your connection with your inner world. Shifting Impressions is here to assist you in strengthening yourself as you excavate to understand your true nature. Lee, Yvonne, and myself with the realm of beings eagerly invite you to join us today and learn to shift your mindset, shift your thoughts, and shift your focus to recreate your life and produce a new you. Shifting Impressions starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. I'm Lee, and I'm here with Greta today, and we are very happy to be on Transformation Talk Radio every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Pacific. Thank you for joining us today. These conversations will help you examine your life and your creation of reality. They will help you to shift your impressions and understand what you're creating in your life and how it shows up. Thanks for joining us today. Every week we chat about a quotation that Greta has downloaded from the Realm of Beings. And today is no different. However, we are only two today because Yvonne is not going to be able to join us today. She has a very joyful event happening in her home. So uh, she is with us in spirit. (laughs) Greta, how are you? I'm fine, Lee. I'm fine. How are you doing this morning? I am well, thank you. We are talking about the quote, we're talking about prosperity today, and I guess prosperity of all things and abundance, and we will see where this conversation takes us. Uh, The quotation is, do not think of paying a bill. Instead, think of it as a circulation of prosperity. The concept of paying a bill is a belief in lack. So, the realm gave us a very uh, common, you know, every monthly thing that most of us do <laughs> engage in. And, uh, you know, they're offering this so we can shift things because, I mean, you know, I don't see, I, I just probably say, oh, the bills are here, you know, let's pay them. I wouldn't think that it's necessarily, cons- you know, thinking that things are lacking um so and but you know to look at it as a circulation of prosperity feels better because i was thinking about this before the podcast and i said you know there are so many things that okay i will speak for myself there are many things that i take for granted You know, uh, you know, I you you just go into a room and you flip on a light switch and Eureka, you know, you have lights, you have heating, air conditioning, whatever. And it's only those times when we're having a shortage that you flip on the light and you realize how fortunate we are, you know, maybe in its absence. So we are very prosperous. So it's wonderful to think about all of this energy that's flowing to us to operate so many things in our lives. And, you know, and, you know, there is like a fee for that. So we have to sort of, you know, spin it back and be prosperous and overflowing. (laughs) Greta, what do you have to say? You know, I, I want to start with um, a story. Okay. We like stories. (laughs) <laughs> you're it's on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> it's a story about me when I went to um started learning beginning to learn metaphysics one of the things that was discussed was prosperity so we were there were about eight of us me included and uh, we were talking to Claudine about, well, what is 
prosperity. The first thing she talked to us about was, if you see a tree and the tree has many leaves on it in the spring, it's got, or summer, it's got a lot of leaves. Um, what are you gonna think about that tree? So we said, oh, that tree is healthy. The, the tree is, is, is uh, in a good spot. It's growing, you know? And she said, okay. So then she said, what about a tree um, that you see that's standing among all the other trees and it only has one leaf on it? Now, what do you think about that tree? Of course, we all went and said, well, that tree is not doing that well. You know, it's not doing that well in looking at that. So that was her beginning. That was my beginning lesson in prosperity. Mm. You know, then after that, uh, with the realm, I began to examine prosperity basically on my own after that years later to see, well, what is prosperity? The first thing you think of is that prosperity is uh, money and finances. Um, but it's much more than that. And I think that's what we'll get in today. In that when we say you're prosperous, you might not be a millionaire, but you're still prosperous. Because if we have an affirmation if you don't mind, I'd like to share it with everybody. Not uh, sure. I'll do it twice. So if those people want to uh, are out there um, in our listening audience and want to write it down, that's fine. No problem with that. Um, it was one of the affirmations given to me uh, by the realm of beings in reference to prosperity. And we, uh, it starts off, I am experiencing. Now I wanna say that uh, the word experiencing is there and it's extremely important because when you say you're experiencing something, what is it? It's going on and it has a, a sense of going on. Um, I wanna give this example, I wanna stop that statement I want to say this, an affirmation can be stagnant or it can be dynamic, stagnant or dynamic. A stagnant one is one that says, I am happy. So I am happy. I am prosperous. Okay. I am happy, you can be happy, sure, right then and there when you are saying it, I am happy. But a day later, you're not happy, you see. So there's no energy there to keep that really going because it's I'm happy at this moment that I'm saying it, but I'm not happy on a continuous basis. Where if you say that I am experiencing happiness, then it's going on and on. It's moving to the next day. It's moving three days later. It's moving through uh, the challenges that you have. It's moving through the uneasiness that you have. You see, it's still, it's still there. It's still there. Now, some people will say, well, I am happy is still there too because you can't kill energy. You can't get uh, can't get rid of a, a thought that you have. And, and I'd have to go along with that and say they're accurate about that. But the only thing is, uh, it's like riding in a car. You can get in a car that can only go 20 miles per hour or you can get in a car that can take you 40. So which one are you going to want? Because you got to get to grandma's house. So you're going to, you want to get there fast. She's got the turkey on the table waiting and everything. So you're going to say, oh, let's take the, the car that goes 40 miles per hour instead of the car that goes 20 miles per hour. So that's like the difference between a stagnant uh, one affirmation and a dynamic one. 
So we always put, we encourage people to put experiencing, that word experiencing there. So I am experiencing, and now you decide what kind of prosperity do you want? I tell people, think opulent. Don't think abundant. Don't just think prosperity. Think opulence. Somebody asked me, well, what, what is the difference between the two? I said, the difference can be you having a house with a bedroom in it, one bedroom house. Okay, you're prosperous. Then you're going to say, well, I need more room. So now I'm going to purchase a house or an apartment or a condo that's got two bedrooms in it. Okay, now we're getting abundance. Now you decide, oh, that's not enough room, and I really want a large house. So you go out and you purchase a castle. Now you're dealing with opulence because you got over 10 bedrooms, you see. So that's how we kind of explain it, you know, from just being prosperous to being opulent. So we say the affirmation goes, I am experiencing having opulent prosperity in, which is I in, in, and we're going to give you eight things, not just money, but eight things. One of them is people, then places, things, energy, health, events, money, and money substance. I'll do that again for everybody, people. People are very important because people help you do things. If you want your house painted, sure, you're gonna pay the person, but you're circulating that prosperity while that person is circulating their energy and their talents to painting your house. So it's a circulation, it goes around. It's not just one-sided, so don't think one-sidedness. So people, places, you've got a place to stay or you're going on a trip, that's a place. People, places, things, we need things. We have on our clothes, those are things. So people, places, things, events. Like uh, tomorrow, uh, Yvonne's daughter is getting married. The family is very joyous and happy. So that's an event for them. That is prosperity for them and prosperity for the couple as well okay so people places things events energy you have energy because you're here everything you do has energy behind doing it if there was no energy you wouldn't you wouldn't be doing anything you know so energy is important and health Health is prosperity. Being in good health is prosperity. I'm going to say that again. I want to say that a third time. Yes, please do. <laughs> health is having your health is being prosperous. Sure, you might have an ailment. You might have a little arthritis. You might have, you know, uh, whatever you've created for yourselves, but still on a whole, you are still healthy. Even if you're hanging on to this much of health, that is still prosperity. But some people have, ooh, they're really, really super duper in health. They're at the gym, they're, uh, you know, charging up, they're running three miles a day, they're playing tennis, they're really active and active. And then there are some of us that sit and most of our jobs are sitting. So we're not moving, but we still have our help. That is prosperity. Now, money, that's currency. That's currency. I found a dime. I was cleaning out one of my drawers about two or three days ago. And I said, oh my God, there's a dime. It was like I hadn't seen a dime in so long. You know, you either have a 
debit or a credit card or you're doing Zelle or you're doing something, but you're not thinking about a dime. I saw that dime. It was like, whoa, look what I've got. You know, that was just uh, gave me a feeling of great joy just to see that dime, 10 cents, you know, and then we have money substance. Everybody asks me, what is money substance? Money substance is anything that's not currency, stocks, bonds, um, diamonds, pearls, anything like that would fall in the line of uh, money substance. And then some of you might want to add on some others, and that's fine. Joy, peace, having joy in your life, that's also being prosperous. I'm just not giving all of the emotional hearts to the prosperity, happiness, you know, unconditional love, you're receiving unconditional love from somebody or you're circulating it back to somebody. You know, that's all, that's all prosperity. So think prosperity. I have people, I now to the bill thing that you mentioned, I have to pay my bills. Don't see, don't see it as paying your bills. Because when you see it as paying your bills, you're thinking it's going out. I'm sending my money out. You think out. So when it goes out, you look at your checkbook and you say, okay, my money's going down. So then you start looking into lack with that. So we say, don't think of a uh, that as a bill because take, for instance, the electric company. The electric company, regardless of where it is, usually gives you electricity before you give them any money. So that company or those companies have circulated prosperity to you in the form of electricity. And the only thing you're doing is circulating back to the same company in the form of money or currency. So it's a circulation of prosperity. And then you're going to see that it's you're going to have better feelings about yourself. You know, just uh, it's not going to be that, well, I'm in poverty row. I, I had a friend of mine, every time we had class, before class would start, she had her checkbook out. She was balancing her checkbook, balancing, balancing, and saying, oh, I won't have enough money to do this. I won't have enough money to do that. I mean, this happened every week. You know, just watching her do that, I must honestly say, wore me out, you know. And then I, you know, I, I was doing the same thing. And then after a while, I said, oh, let me just see that I have money. And then that's what I started doing, just looking at, I got money, I got money. In fact, um, my daughter's father said to me, he says, you know, it's real funny, but I've noticed that we never run out of money. I just looked at him. I said, yep, yep, doggy. We're not running out of money. I'm going to see myself in prosperity. I used to say overabundance of prosperity. Now I even let that go aside. I say opulent prosperity. Because mama always told me, if you aim high, you might not get to it, but you're going to come close. You know, so I'm I'm focusing on coming to it, not even close to it, but to it. So in my conceptualization of what is going to be uh, prosperous for, for Greta, because I can't claim prosperity for anybody else but Greta. Mm -hmm. How's that, Lee? Will that oh, work? that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Words to live by. See, sometimes our mothers actually gave us some good words to live by <laughs> every now and then. <laughs> yeah, 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 for real, for real, for well, real. Well, I mean, I just wanted to talk about, uh, you know, how this, uh, you know, the circulation of prosperity reminds me something of, um, you know, flowing, right? You know, it's a, it's a flow. 
it's a movement because everything is energy, right? And the way we can maybe shift things is to see that, you know, changing our perspective just in that little area, like you said, you know, oh, looking at my checkbook and saying, oh, it's going down. No, just knowing, you know, look at it a different way and say that I have money and that's wonderful, you know? Um, it's just these small shifts that we can make. And, you know, I guess it's just, um, you know, I like to think of this thing sometimes as, you know, like feeling prosperous and opulent prosperity and abundance. It's something, you know, to flow with really you know um and to try to not like how exactly do we create the blockages in the flow oh by many ways sometimes we start just to be aware you know of those maybe like subconscious things that could be happening oh yeah oh yeah i have people whose parents uh grew up in the depression. So that's one way through the epigenetics, through the experience of that and you carrying that experience. I have uh, worked with people who um, their parents were in World War II, left uh, Europe and immigrated uh, to the uh, United States and uh, were very, um, vigilant about how they spent their money you know if you feel you don't have a lot you have a tendency to want to hang on to it and you you count your you know how they said you count your pennies mm -hmm. how many pennies do you have left so if you've grown up in an atmosphere like that more than likely you're going to find yourself doing the same thing counting every penny like the woman I told you about who uh, looked in her checkbook, you know. In fact, that was, I saw her looking in it the day she came to class, but she checked it every day. Every day she was attached to that checkbook. How much money do I have? And see, and that's a sense of fear as well. Right. Fear, fear, fear that you're going to lack something. And we've uh, talked in various podcasts that fear is a very challenging uh, emotion because what it does, it carries such strong energy with it that what it does is to actually help you to manifest the very thing that you fear. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're fearing uh, lack, then you're going to see yourself. Uh, more than likely experiencing uh, lack. Right, but again, also just to be uh, like a little cognizant and um, you know, so a little easy on ourselves, I suppose. I just feel like I should interject. You know, we are human, right? And we are part of the mammal animal kingdom and it is built in as a survival mechanism, right? Because you know, along with our, you know, with our lineage and whatever, you know, I mean, nature sometimes has a way of making mechanisms for conservation, right? But mm -hmm. you know, it's a fine line between conserving resources and hoarding resources. Right, because you're right. It's a mind, it's a mindset. How how do you look at it? See, and, and you can block yourself from other resources, depending on how you look at the present resources you have. You see, if you're, if in other words, if you're focused on lack, or you're focused on that you don't have enough money, or you're focused on Will my money that I got take me to the end of the week or 
Ooh, payday is Friday. I can't wait. Because I'm running out of money. You know, that's all. That's all. That's fear based as well. There's fear contained within those things. So when you have fear inside there, then it's very close to you experiencing the very thing you fear. That that's what we that's what we were saying with that. So you want to see because you you, you know see so you want to attract. Most of the people I think listening today they've either seen the movie, uh, or about law of attraction or. Somewhere along the line, you've read a book about law of attraction. So it's all energy. If you're putting energy to lack, then you're going to experience lack because that's your focus. Mm -hmm. That's your focus. If your focus is I'm experiencing opulent prosperity, or maybe you can't even think opulent, that's okay. I had to go through prosperity, then abundance. I, I went through all those steps to be able to say, okay, I'm ready now. I can experience opulent prosperity for me. Now, what's opulent for me can be totally different from what is opulent from you, Lee. Right. You, know, uh, you know, some people, uh, I knew a man that um, he was an associate of mine, oh, years back. He left a, uh, he got fired, in fact. He fired himself from a finance company, a, fin a big financial uh, to do. And in celebration, he celebrated. See, everybody else would be sitting down worried about where, what am I going to do next? Where's my money coming from? He didn't even think anything about that. The man went out and bought himself a Rolls Royce. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, if you did a Rolls Royce, you know, back then, even a Rolls Royce was over 100000 close to $200,000. So he just, he said, that's what I want. He mm -hmm. didn't think, oh, I've, I, 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 I've gotten fired. And actually, to the audience, nobody can fire you because nobody can do anything to you. If you if you've lost your job, then you created to do that. So he created to leave. He wasn't that happy uh, with the company anyway. So that was his answer to opulent prosperity. Now, Greta, if I went through that, I never would have thought of let me go out and buy a Rolls Royce. That would have been the last thing. So that's why I'm saying that every each person has their own way of thinking about prosperity. What does that mean to you? Yeah. Right. Because everything is your perspective, right? We're all, I mean, that's like sort of the beautiful thing about this, right? We all have our own perspective and if you want to grow and evolve and change, that's good. And if you choose something, you know, not to, that's okay too. So it's just an experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I know we're getting ready to go to the next segment, but I want to say this story and I might have said it in a previous podcast, but I once had a young man who was in, um, I met him in high school along with several other uh, young people around his age. And we used to come, they used to come and talk um, metaphysics with me and spirituality with me, okay? So he's a senior in high school, smart as a whip, had a, two, had a mother, a father, lived in a nice place, everything. So I said to him, he's getting ready to graduate. So just like most people do, you know, I asked him, I said, well, what are you going to do now that you're graduating from high school? Now, I thought he was going to give me a cliche answer like I'm going to college or I'm going to get a job or I'm going into the military or I'm going to go study a vocation. I thought something around that line. He didn't say that to me. He said, he said, Greta, 
I'm going to practice homelessness, being homeless. I said, that is wonderful. Because that was the reality that he wanted to experience. So that was his prosperity. And I checked, and I, said, I, I didn't see him. And I said to some of the others that did see him, I said, well, how is he doing? Oh, he's out on the street. He's out on the street, Greta. I said, okay, he's doing his thing. There you go. Right. I mean, that's interesting. We generally don't hear those stories of people trying something that drastically new, right? It's something about our culture that we always try to go, quotation marks, up, 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 more, 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 right? <laughs> right. And he, so it's a big difference, but see, this is the thing. The man who bought the Rolls Royce, is the same as the young man experiencing homelessness. They are both successful individuals. You know, you have to, you have to, the, being homeless, you have to work at being homeless. You know what I mean? Mm, right, it's a different kind of work, for sure. For real, I've been, a, I've been homeless. So I know what it's like. You turn around, you don't have a place to stay. And then you're trying to think about, well, what am I going to eat? You know, so he is just as successful. Both of them are the same. They've just chosen different realities to experience. And both realities are okay. That's what I'd like to end with, Lee. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you, listeners, for joining us today. Uh, we are coming to our first break. After the break, we will be joined by the realm of beings to hear what they have to say about this quotation. Thank you for listening. We'll be right back. Hello, and welcome back to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings, where we reach the point in our podcast where the realm uh, joins us and they share their wisdom about the quotation Greta and I have been discussing. So, realm, are you with us? Yes. Well, thank you. Uh, today, we've been talking about the quotation, do not think of paying a bill, instead, Think of it as a circulation of prosperity. The concept of paying a bill is a belief in lack. So Greta and I were talking about uh, prosperity and circulation. I was talking about flow and everything's basically energy. So uh, maybe for those listening who could potentially still be stuck in a little lack hole, <laughs> How can we help them shift? Mm. You know, the shifting is always done by way of thoughts. When you want to shift, change your thought. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody's heard that over and over again, you know, from various people here. Right. From various people uh, that are like us, individuals, even though we're not people, but, you know, individuals like us. It's a, if you want to change your reality, change your thoughts. But sometimes that can be more than a notion for some people because they can get so stuck in it. And what we mean by stuck in it, some people can be so deep inside that thought that they don't even know that they're deep inside that thought. They don't know that they've created these realities because they prefer to think that somebody else created the reality for them. Right, and there's like some fear in that. I was reading this allegory about, I don't know what it is, Socrates or Plato, the allegory of the people that are stuck in the cave and they have the shadows from the fire and the people in the cave think the shadows are 
real until one goes out and you know sees that they're living in a cave and there's a whole world out there when he comes back they all think he's crazy <laughs> absolutely absolutely because there's fear in that right sometimes if there's if we're talk we touched on it a little bit with Greta but um you know to change take some courage I guess but people don't want to think that they would have hurt themselves in any way shape or form they don't want to think that I got slapped in the face I created that how did I create that? You know, I stepped out of my house and my house caught on fire. But if I say I won the lottery, I did a good thing. If somebody hands me $10,000, oh, I did a good thing. If I create a job that's paying me the amount of money that I feel that I'm worth, oh, I did a good thing. But if you stub your toe, the table was in the way. Right. So the first thing for prosperity's sake is to recognize that you are creating your reality. That's a part of prosperity as well. Knowledge. Not only getting the knowledge of it, but understanding that you create your own reality. Because there's freedom in that. It's prosperity in that. Because then you know, I control everything in reference to me. Only me now. Not your mama, not your brother, not your family. I just wanted to get in a little singing there. <laughs> but it's only you, you see. And see, the other thing that individuals don't remember, they don't remember that and, and think that it's not that the prosperity is outside. The prosperity is inside. You are the prosperity. Everything else is just symbolic of your prosperity. But you are the prosperity itself. I know people's heads are turning with that. One. Exactly. Just go explain that to us realm what do you mean we're the prosperity come on we are the divine the divine is everything the divine lacks nothing nothing we are the divine we are the force however you want to define its name and it is filled with opulent, opulent, opulent prosperity. And you are it. So therefore you have everything. So the, the suggestion from us is to stop believing that you don't. Sure, some of you will say to me, well, I don't have a job. Okay, you don't have a job. So Get out there and create one for yourself. You took the thing away. You decided not to have one. Now you're deciding you want one. Go after it. Now you, you're deciding, well, I'm ready to do something, but I don't want to work for somebody. I want to work for somebody else. Okay, then get up and go do something about it. Don't sit down and go, oh, woe is me. Greta always talks about, you know, what's that little character with the blonde hair in those movies? Alice in Wonderland. You're going down into the rabbit hole with Alice in Wonderland. She calls it sipping tea. Sipping tea with Alice down in the rabbit hole. 
Who would want to be in a rabbit hole with Alice? Sipping tea with a talking rabbit at that. Who's going to, uh, what can they do? They can console you. Oh, we're so, so sorry that happened to you. We're so, so sorry you lost your job. We're so, so sorry you lost money in the stock market. I, uh, you know, sometimes people try, I lost $32,000 in the stock market. Okay. You did? Okay. Now what you gonna do? So it's like, stop focusing on the lost things in your life and start thinking of the beauty that your divinity creates for you all the time. Some people create debilitating illnesses that put them in a place of they feel sad for themselves. They have fear for themselves. Cure yourselves. You uncured yourself, so cure yourself. How do you do that? You change your focus. Change your focus. It's like many people that uh, we see, they look at their mates. Well, my mate is is experiencing alcoholism, you know, so they keep feeding that. Oh, woe is me. My mate is experiencing alcoholism. I never know what he's going to be like or she is going to be like when they get home. And they just keep seeing the person drunk all the time. Even when the person is not there, has gone somewhere, they still see the person drunk. Or they see the person still experiencing alcoholism. They still see that. That's the focus. So what are you doing? You're giving energy. Boom, boom, boom. You're giving all that energy to alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. Jobless, jobless, jobless. That's your focus. So, defocus. Focus on prosperity of joy, Proster prosperity of peace, prosperity of living and existing within divineness of which you really truly are. You really truly are. Yep, yep. Any questions, Lee? Well, I just wanted to talk about um, like this, is there a difference between this term to accumulate or to have prosperity and abundance? Because I feel like maybe, you know, we, we uh, earlier when Greta was talking, she said someone took a took a try from you know relative let's say affluence to becoming homeless right which is a path that we don't generally hear about we think it's usually not a choice right that it just happened to them um but we know that that's inaccurate so um you know the difference between accumulating things and abundance like is there a fine line you know uh, we all think we want to save money in our banks and this and that, and then we are prosperous. But and and Greta was talking about circulating prosperity. So, do we keep things or do we give it away? <laughs> <laughs> do you keep things or do you give it away? You know, when you're saving, let's say. You know, is that somehow a belief in lack? 
It depends on how you're saving it. If you're putting it in a shoe box and putting it inside your closet, then there's something different about saving it and putting it in bonds where it's going to increase its value. Even if you put it in, ba in the bank and you have a savings account, you're still circulating prosperity because as you put that money in there, what's happening? The bank is circulating back to you interest. No, well, they yeah. use <laughs> your money for something of their choice. Right. So they, they circulate that money. Some, huh? somewhere else. Uh, they it's, circulate theoretically that money somewhere else. Of course, but it's still circulation of prosperity. We don't want to deny anybody the opportunity to circulate prosperity. Some people decide to circulate prosperity in low vibrational things. Mm, mm, that's an interesting way to look at it. So, I mean, there's some people that, uh, you know, stand on the corner or stand in their houses and people go to them to purchase recreational drugs. I'll give you the drugs, you give me the money. That's circulation of prosperity. It's just that if you judge it, which I just did, so that everybody could be attuned to it. If you judge it, then of course you're going to say, oh, that's terrible. They're selling drugs on the street. You see. So you're going to look at that activity as low vibration. If I'm selling the drugs in a dispensary, same drug now, but in a dispensary, <laughs> I'm going to look at it and say, that's oh, high vibrational. Entrepreneur. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we can add to this now the concept of perception. And I think you were doing that earlier before you brought us on. What is your perception of something? What is your perception? Yeah. Yes. So that comes in. So see, uh, prosperity, yes, it can go in many ways, many ways. But for those of you who quote unquote want to circulate in high vibration, then think circulation. Think it. You know, the, the little children that go out there in the summer, they set up their little lemonade stands and they sell lemonade for 25 cents a cup. They give you the lemonade, you give them the currency. That's circulation of prosperity. Yeah. So it, is, oh, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, no, go. No, I was saying, like, uh, can we think of it as more sort of like, you know, if you feel that you're stuck and stagnating, that would be more of like an accumulation. However, if you feel lively and flowing, that's more of a circulation of prosperity, right? Because you can accumulate, like, and all kinds of things that, you know, in the body and then you may get illness or, you know, emotions get stuck there. So the idea is just to circulate. And circulate with joy of the circulation, peace of the circulation. I'm paying my mortgage note. Oh, I'm sweating over paying my mortgage note. Oh, I'm paying my mortgage note. 
because I have a wonderful house or a condo I'm living in. I'm appreciating every wall that surrounds me. So you're happy to be there. That doesn't mean that you stay because you're happy there, you cannot change. You can change. You can increase your prosperity and also you can decrease your prosperity. It all depends on your perception. How you're looking at something, you know. Are you viewing it as uh, increasing prosperity or are you viewing it as not? And you're going to get what you think. If it's increasing, it'll be increasing. If it's stagnating, it's going to stagnate. You know. I hear people saying, well, the stock market is really, it's terrible. We've gone into, what do you call it, recession. And we've done this and we're doing that and we're going sliding down the hill. When you don't have to slide down the hill. Right, you because slide, there are you people. You can be in a group of people, but you don't have to slide with them. Exactly. There are those who make, you know, incredible gains, you know, that when other people claim to be in a recession or there's a downturn. So that's all just a creation of reality. Right. And that's seems a little hard to believe. Right. Oh, no, everyone's talking inflation and crashes and this and that. But, you know, there's a complete other side to that. Right. Right. Some people. Uh, you know, we listen to them when Greta works with them. And some people talk about, oh, I've lost this amount of money. Oh, I've lost, I've lost, I've lost. There you go. Realm, we have just uh, maybe a minute left of the podcast. Do you have just some closing thought? Yes. One is that we say it every time, uh, but uh, and that is to love yourself, each one of you. I don't care what circumstances you have created. Each one of you, it's important for you to love and appreciate yourselves. And if you've created a reality that you know you wish you hadn't. Don't beat up on yourself. Just say, I'm going to change this. Once you make up your mind that you want to change it, then things will come. The energy will send things to you or other energies will come to support. Remember, it's create, support, support, create. So have the support coming to you by way of opulent prosperity. And on that note, this, we will close another episode of Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. Greta, thank you for being here today. Realm, as always, thank you for joining us and sharing your wis wisdom. And listeners, thank you for being here uh, on another podcast. This has been Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings until we create each other again. Once again, thanks for joining us at Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings on TransformationTalkRadio.com. As you have explored today's creation of reality experience with Lee, Yvonne, the Realm, and me, Greta, each of you is being supported by us in further developing the understanding that you are not just an individual existing in linear time and space, but a multidimensional force of infinite possibilities who is connected to all. So begin to create the realities you want 
Join us every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific Time and 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Shifting Impressions at TransformationTalkRadio.com. So long until we create each other again next Friday.